a smile, a hug, a kiss. Let Werther's Original Caramels make you feel like someone very special. A little piece of bliss. Stop! Clearing breakouts doesn't have to be harsh on your sensitive skin. New Cetaphil Gentle Clear contains balanced formulas that gently clear breakouts and soothe sensitive skin. Cetaphil, complete acne care for sensitive skin. Now in the acne aisle. Now, don't forget to catch Cameron's General Hospital journey starting tomorrow. Woo! I don't want to let you go. I know. Thank I don't you want, so I want much. To leave. It was so fun being back. I'm so crazy about you guys. I miss you so much, NT. Okay, I'm going to put you to work one last time. Oh. You ready for this one? All right, I guess okay, so. Go okay, for here it. we go. We leave you all with a RuPaul exclusive. Starting today, you can visit his wax figure at Madame Tussauds, Las Vegas, but only we've got a sneak peek for you right now. Sachet, hey, everybody. Stranger. See you. Sachet, Stranger. See? You, just, you can watch <laughs> Bye, her too. everybody. <laughs> you better work. Happening now. The legal back and forth regarding a mass mandate continuing today. This time, a judge ruling again in favor of that mass mandate. We'll have a breakdown of that hearing coming up. And the United States moving in the wrong direction as COVID-19 cases surge over the weekend. The one area where it's taking a big brunt of the Delta variant next. We do have some pop-up showers and storms on the radar, so coming up, an in-depth look at those and our rain chances continue this week. A look ahead coming up. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, we have late breaking news. The local mask mandate remains. The back and forth legal battle concerning mask mandates in Bexar County continued today, despite the Texas Supreme Court ruling in favor of Governor Greg Abbott yesterday. In today's injunction hearing ruling, a Bexar County judge again siding with the city and the county and granting the temporary injunction. Erica Hernandez has been listening to all of the hearing all day, and she's joining us now with the latest from the courtroom. Erica, so what? does this ruling mean now? So this ruling means the city and county mask mandate remains in effect for schools, city employees, and those entering city and county facilities. 57 Civil District Court Judge Antonio Arteaga, again the presiding judge during this injunction hearing. Now, if you remember just last week, she ruled in favor of granting the city and county a temporary restraining order to issue a mask mandate. Yesterday, that ruling was reversed by the Texas Supreme Court, but that ruling did not apply to today. Today's hearing. During today's hearing, five witnesses took the stand, four for the city and county and one for the attorney general's office. Now, this is a lot to keep track of as we keep going back and forth when it comes to a mask man, excuse me, a mask mandate. Right now, with today's ruling, the city and county now have the authority to keep their mandate in place. This most likely will go through the appeals process again and head back to the Texas Supreme Court, who can later overturn it if they choose to do so. Now, we will continue to follow this case as it plays out in court, but for now, we can expect that mass mandate here in San Antonio and Bear County to stay in place. For a more detailed account of today's hearing, just head to our website, ksat.com. Steve? Thank you, Erica. We've got more late breaking news now, this time from the San Antonio Independent School District. Teachers and staff will be required to be fully vaccinated by October 15th, in addition to requiring masks for teachers, staff and students in compliance with the Bear County mask mandate. The district's officials sending a letter to employees saying that they strongly believe that vaccines are the best way to stop the spread of the coronavirus. They also point out in the letter it takes five weeks to become fully vaccinated after getting your first shot. So to hit that deadline, teachers and staff are going to need to get those shots pretty soon. Meantime, a local nurse describing what he has seen on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Registered nurse at university's pediatric ICU says it has been difficult watching children suffer due to COVID-19. He says kids are coming to the hospital. They have fevers, weakness, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing. Ages range from teens to infants. They've had patients as young as six months old hospitalized with COVID. They're healthy kids who were probably doing a normal day stuff, having fun with their friends and going out and playing and stuff like that, who actually can't breathe in some ways and who are having a lot of anxiety. Coming up at six o'clock, what other viruses they are treating kids for and the ways to keep your child safe. 
Today, several school districts in the area opening their doors for kids to return the first day of school. One of those being Seguin ISD, whose superintendent says this school year will look similar to 2019. But there will not be a vaccine mandate at Seguin ISD's campuses. And while students and staff will be encouraged to wear masks, it will not be a requirement. The district superintendent, Dr. Matthew Gutierrez, says that decision will be left with parents. We're going to rely on our parents to make the best decision for their children. And so if there's one thing that I can stress, it's that parents really pay attention to the way the trends are looking in our school district, and in our community, and really uh, taking some time to discuss as a family and consider uh, wearing a mask. Now, the Seguin District will have thermometers at all campus main entrances. They will notify families immediately if there's a positive COVID case. Coronavirus testing will be available for students. Meantime, students at Northeast ISD also returning to the classroom today. And the ISD superintendent putting out a strong, wordly worded message encouraging all students and staff to mask up. Destiny Pearson had her daughter at home for the entire first year of school. Today, she brought her daughter to Cerna Elementary for the first time to begin first grade. She admits she's nervous about masks not being mandatory. It's a little bit overwhelming, a little bit. Um, I think that we're ready for her to go back, but it's just like, is she going to keep her mask on? Is she going to do the things that she needs to do? The principal of Cerna Elementary, Jennifer Lomas, tells us that she believes the students at the school are safe, with the majority of them choosing to wear a mask. The CDC reporting a record high number of COVID patients under the age of 49 years old. The daily number of cases, the highest since January. The doctors and nurses feeling the strain, hospitals running low on beds. Here's ABC's Morgan Norwood with details. As hospitals in the southern states bear the brunt of the Delta variant, please send help now. The U.S. now trending in the same direction of last year's winter surge. In Houston, Texas, nearly 600 patients waiting for hospital beds, 87 for ICU beds. Thankfully, Jessica Gonzalez's nine-year-old was able to get the care he needed. I was really scared. To be honest, he wasn't responding to the oxygen and to the uh, medications that they were giving him. Nationwide, more than 140,000 new COVID cases reported Friday and Saturday. That's the highest of consecutive days since January. The spread triggering a shrink in staff among key healthcare positions. We see a shortage because nurses are valued more than ever. So not only working the front line with our patients in direct direct face-to-face -face patient contact. In New York, an indoor vaccine mandate beginning on Tuesday to help boost vaccinations and curb the spread. We want people to enjoy the fullness of the city, but you gotta be vaccinated to do it. Don't fool around with fake vaccination cards. By the way, it's against the law and there are serious penalties for that. From coast to coast, a glimmer of hope for those with compromised immune systems. Booster shots authorized by the FDA officially rolling out. I was waiting just waiting to pull the trigger. I was ready to go today, and I did. And the Biden administration is working on a plan to administer booster shots to healthcare workers and nursing home residents, but an exact timeline hasn't been released. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. A new at five, an arrest has been made in the shooting at a sports bar on Sunday that left three people dead, two others injured. This man, 34-year-old Daniel Berrigan, was arrested earlier today. He's charged with three counts of capital murder. Berrigan walked in front of our cameras just a short while ago. That shooting happened just before 3.30 in the morning on Sunday at Boom Boom Sports Bar on South New Braunfels Avenue near I-10. San Antonio police tell us a fight started inside that bar, spilled out into the parking lot. Police tell us they were able to catch up with Baragon after he was pulled over for a traffic stop earlier today at the corner of Southwest Military and Curtis. 26-year-old Mauro Rodriguez and 32-year-old April Rodriguez were killed in that shooting. They were identified by family members. The third victim has not yet been identified. San Antonio police are looking for a missing 13-year-old girl. Leilana Graham was visiting San Antonio with her foster parents yesterday when they got into an argument at the River Center Mall and she left. 
She was last seen in the 100 block of Bowie Street. Ilana has black hair, brown eyes, and was last seen wearing a black t-shirt, turquoise leggings, and black shoes with white stripes. If you've seen her or you have any information on her whereabouts, you're being asked to call the SAPD Missing Persons Unit. The phone number to call 210-207-7660. San Antonio police responding to a shots fired call at an apartment complex around noon after a man sleeping with his gun. That gun went off hitting a woman in the head. That's the story anyway. The incident happened at Oak Springs Apartments on Perrin Central Boulevard. That's according to SAPD. A 20 year old man sleeping with a pistol when it went off going through the door of the apartment next door hitting a 24 year old woman in the head. The woman was taken to Samsey. She is expected to be OK in all of this. No word on if that man will face charges. Over on the east side, a fire destroying two beloved businesses in the community. An overnight fire destroying a convenience store and a fast food restaurant at the corner of East Commerce and Walters. It took firefighters nearly a half an hour and the use of heavy equipment to get inside. The losses weren't just felt by the business owners, but the community as well. It's sad to see something, you know, that we come to enjoy be gone just like that overnight. Fire investigators tell us the fire was accidental and most likely caused by electrical problems. Well, we certainly had a really toasty day around San Antonio, but just as we're hitting the peak heating hours of the day, we have got some showers and storms in the area, mainly up in the hill country, though, right now near Rock Springs, a good amount of rain, a good healthy amount of rain in uh, western Kerrville right now in the central part of Kerrville County, uh, Kerr County, rather. Look at Rock Springs in Brenna's backyard. She got over an inch of rain in just 45 minutes from that very healthy rain producing storm up there. Meanwhile, it's 100 degrees in Warren's backyard in Del Rio and temperatures closer to the metro area. 89 in New Braunfels, 96 in Universal City. Now coming up, we do have more chances for rain in the next 48 hours or so. I'll walk you through the future cast in just a bit. Steve. Thank you, Sarah. Now to Afghanistan, where the Taliban has taken over Kabul, the capital city. The images are striking more scenes from the city's airport as thousands of people rush to flee the country. Hundreds of them swarming airplanes taking off on the tarmac. ABC's Ike Ijoji in Washington with the latest. Today, dramatic images emerging from Kabul. This video of Afghans swarming a U.S. military plane leaving the airport. Long lines filled with people trying to leave the country. Helicopters seen here flying away. The enormous throng of people can be seen from satellite images. ABC's Ian Panel on the ground in Kabul. This crowd rushing to the airport. Behind them, the sound of gunfire. <laughs> The United Nations holding an emergency session. UN Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield calling on the Taliban to allow Afghan nationals and international citizens who wish to depart to be allowed to do so safely. Any action that put U.S. personnel or a mission at risk will be met with a swift and strong military response. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres telling the council all countries must be open to accepting Afghan refugees. We cannot and must not abandon the people of Afghanistan. Those scenes intensifying throughout the day. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby confirming approximately 2,500 U.S. troops are at the airport assisting with evacuation efforts. That number will grow to 6,000 within the next coming days. Now, reports of U.S. troops involved in skirmishes with armed individuals at the airport. While our mission is not offensive, our forces have the inherent right of self-defense. This morning, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan was asked if President Biden was wrong about the Taliban and the Afghan army's capabilities. When push came to shove, they decided not to step up and fight for their country. And so the question facing the president is, should U.S. men and women be put into the middle of another country's civil war. The Pentagon says there is no indication that the individuals who fired upon U.S. troops at the airport were members of the Taliban. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Still ahead, no matter your favorite salad dressing, it can turn your healthy salad bowl into mm, something less than healthy. Coming up, we're going to take a look at some of the dressings that are not only good, but good for you, too. at 
five. It's almost dinner time, and we're talking salad dressing. Everybody has a favorite. Maybe it's Thousand Island or blue cheese, but they can also turn what you think is a healthy salad into a bowl of, well, less than healthy ingredients. So Consumer Reports put 23 dressings to the test to find a couple that are good and good for you. 1200 size Marilyn Morris with the results. Sometimes the dressing makes the salad, so Consumer Reports food experts focused on two faves, raspberry vinaigrette and good old ranch. They looked at nutrition and did blind taste tests, because face it, if a healthy dressing doesn't taste good, you probably won't use it. Salad dressings can be loaded with added sugars and sodium, but the fat in dressings is usually the heart healthy type, and fat can help your body absorb more of the salad's nutrients. We're seeing some brands use high quality ingredients and lowering the amount of added sugars and sodium. You could find some healthy options that taste really good in the supermarket these days. In the raspberry vinaigrette category, CR recommends Annie's Organic Light. It's a sour sweet berry dressing with hints of honey and mustard. It has the least sodium and fewer added sugars of most of those tested. As for ranch, if you like its creamy, tangy taste, read the labels. Overall, the tested ranch dressings have more sodium than vinaigrettes, up to 280 milligrams in two tablespoons. The ranches did have more sodium than the vinaigrettes, but the ones we tasted all had one gram or less of sugar and were surprisingly low in unhealthy saturated fats. One classic ranch they recommend has just 45 calories a serving. It's Bold House Farms Classic Ranch Yogurt. It's traditional and fresh with mild spices. Topping the ranch ratings, though, is one with a twist, Primal Kitchen Ranch Dressing and Marinade with Avocado Oil. It's tart and lemony and a tasty way to enjoy your veggies. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yogurt Ranch? Don't knock it till you try I'm just, it. I'm just, I'm just questioning. And and Sarah makes her own dressings. That's why she stays so healthy and glowing. Oh gosh, yes, that's the that's the reason. That's the trick, Ursula. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. Now I'm flattered, and I got to talk about the ringing. We I think seeing... it's I think it's awful that your dress matches the weather map. Oh yeah, when it's hot that outside. Hot? Yeah, you don't want that. All right, outside right now though, we are getting some relief from the heat in some areas in the form of some showers and storms. Temperatures are though in the 90s in many locations, even in the triple digits elsewhere. You have to go up to the hill country though to see where that rain is right now. Rock Springs area, as I just mentioned, our weather watcher reported an inch of rain in 45 minutes out there. But right now we've got a good thunderstorm pretty much sitting right over Ingram and Hunt and West Kerrville here. Plenty of flashes of lightning as well. The thing with these summer thunder showers is that they are healthy and efficient rain producers and they're not going anywhere. Again, an inch in 45 minutes, I I wouldn't doubt that those areas in Ingram and Hunt are getting that much rain right now as well. This is going to be important looking ahead to the rest of the week because any showers and storms, although many of them will be isolated in nature, will produce a lot of rain, a lot like yesterday's rainfall as well. We do have some showers. Uh, we had some showers in northern Comal County right near Canyon Lake, just to the north of Bernie. These are generating outflow boundaries, and so that's why over the next about three hours or so, we're still going to carry an isolated change chance for showers and storms in San Antonio. Although, again, most of this activity is outside of the Alamo City. We do have some showers also in our coastal communities of Goliad, Cuero, and Kennedy. So for the remainder of the evening, as I mentioned, we're going to have a 20% chance for an isolated shower. Sun will set at 813 and our rain chances will go with it. 80 degrees by midnight and clouds will be developing in late. Let's look at temperatures right now. Look at that 72 in Rock Springs where they just got rain, but 101 in Del Rio. That's the power of a summertime shower at 93 in New Braunfels and 93 in Gonzales. But you tack on the heat index, the humidity, it feels like 100 around San Antonio, it feels like 105 in Pleasanton. All right, a little bit about our weather pattern, a wider view here. You can see very clearly across parts of West Texas, there's plenty of showers and storms. This is why tomorrow in the later part of the day, we're going to have a chance for rain in San Antonio and especially in the hill country and off to the west. Meanwhile, tropical storm for just made landfall in the panhandle of Florida at 215 this afternoon. It still is sustained at a tropical storm with winds of 60 miles per hour, but it is expected to fall apart across Appalachia later on this week and bringing some rainfall to those areas. 
We've been keeping a close eye on Tropical Depression Grace, which is going to re-strengthen into a tropical storm near Jamaica by tomorrow afternoon. It'll eventually make its way to the Yucatan Peninsula by Thursday and, and then get into the Gulf of Mexico, actually strengthen into a hurricane and make landfall somewhere anywhere from v Veracruz all the way up to uh, just to the south of Brownsville. Anywhere there it could make landfall, but it is not going to affect our weather here in San Antonio. So for our high res future cast again tomorrow, we're going to be paying very close attention uh, to areas, especially north and west of San Antonio in afternoon into the evening hours, because it looks like we could have some scattered showers and storms that will be healthy rain producers, potentially causing some flooding issues. But the chance for rain goes like this tomorrow during the afternoon, 30% overnight, 40%. 30% on Wednesday as well. So for your Tuesday morning clouds and 76 degrees, hot and humid for most of the day, rain during the second part of the day is possible. More isolated in San Antonio, but scattered across the hill country. Isolated rain Wednesday and Thursday before a hot and humid weekend. Stephen Ursula. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. All right, he's back in Vegas. He is Joshua Primo. He missed a couple of games because of a sore right knee and the 18 year old was kind of bummed out, but he gets it. He understands why the Spurs did that coming up. He will explain that to us and the Aggies are in the top 10 in the brand new AP top 25 college football poll. We got it coming up. Rookie and first round draft pick Joshua Primo returned to action Sunday after missing the Spurs' previous two summer league games with right knee soreness. And the extra rest was what the 18 year old needed because he was sharp in the Spurs' 104 100 loss to the Nets in Las Vegas last night. Primo scored a team high 21 points in 23 minutes to go with five rebounds, three assists, and three blocks before fouling out in the fourth quarter. Sitting out two games wasn't easy, but Primo understands why the Spurs did it. It was really tough, um, but I know that this organization wants the best for me. At the end of the day, they're, they're looking at the bigger picture, so I got to look at the bigger picture. Um, so just taking it easy, me, being able to know that I'm going to play when it's time, when I feel 100% confident. And once I did that, uh, I was able to come out on the floor and just start to be comfortable. Spurs second year guard Trey Jones was solid once again with 18 points against the Nets. He's really having a fantastic Vegas summer league. Texas A&M football is ranked sixth in the brand new Associated Press top 25. They're the highest ranking team in Texas. Alabama's number one, Oklahoma's two, Clemson, Ohio State, and Georgia round out the top five. The Aggies ranking is the program's highest preseason ranking since R.C. Slocum's 1995 squad started the season at number three. One reason for the Aggies ranking is defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal, who's go, who goes from being a super chill guy off the field to a beast on it. It's just like a light, light switch. It just flips. It just turns on. And from there, it's just up. It's just time to go. It's whoever's in my way, good luck. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Alabama is a preseason number one with 47 first place votes. Oklahoma, Clemson, Ohio State, and Georgia complete the top five. The Aggies are sixth, and Texas comes in at number 21. The only two Texas teams ranked in the top 25. I like that sound bite. Good luck. Yeah. Then he laughs. Yeah. <laughs> but when he's not laughing, it'd probably be scarier. Yeah, it sure yeah. would, right? Or when he's got his helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. See you back here at 6.